What do I really enjoy doing? What do I maybe have as a hobby? What is it that brings joy to my life? I think it takes time. I think it takes reflection. I think it takes, you know, the the effort of asking those questions that you asked. There's so much pressure when it says, what's your why? What's your purpose? Well, it can be a multitude of things. That purpose is in there somewhere. It's not like you have to go out there and find a brand new purpose. Most likely, it's probably within you right now. You just got to, you know, like they say, peel back the layers. This is the Coaches Council, made up of six elite coaches dedicated to serving and ending personal struggle for high performers in business, health, and relationships. As a collective, we have built and helped build six, seven, and eight-figure businesses, dominate in multiple industries, coached and played in professional sports leagues, and developed some of the strongest and most intimate relationships, both professional and personal. This isn't your average podcast. It's for the hungry, the dedicated, the doers, for those that have a dream and truly want that dream to become reality. People who want to take action, leave their ego at the door, and own every level of their life. If that's you, then step into the Coach's Council as we rewrite the truths to living that high performance life. Welcome back to another week of the Coaches Council. As always, I'm Justin and we got Pradeep Sangha on the other end. How are you doing today, Pradeep? And I'm doing pretty awesome. How about yourself? Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Just the two lone soldiers today. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering if everybody else is kind of busy today. Drew's on his weight gaining spree. Where's John? John's in Mexico, isn't he? John is in Mexico and soaking up some sun, getting his vitamin D kick. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy how um, the more that we uh, kind of come out of this pandemic and travel kind of slowly increases that um, we get back to some semblance of normalcy that really kind of, we notice everything kind of stays the same. We kind of have the same habits, the same intentions, the same kind of flow to, to your life. And um, it, it, it kind of just reverts back to what we've always done and what we've always known. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of I'm a little envious of John right now in terms of where he is, because I'd, li- I'd like to be in Mexico myself, man. <laughs> I, know, I know, wouldn't we all? But I wanted to chat today a lot about... Um, the power of why and what why means. And we all know that famous uh, TED talk that uh, Simon Sinek did that kind of put him on the map where why was at the core of everything. And then there was how, and then there was what, and really that when it came down to it, it was trying to truly understand what our why was, what our purpose was, because before we can take action on something, obviously we know we need clarity. Before we have clarity, we need to know why we're doing what we're doing, what our purpose is, what what the reason for that is. And as we go through this, there's there's a lot of people that that just don't know what that why is. They don't know what their purpose is. They feel lost. They feel trapped. They feel um, theoretically like they're just floating through life. And I actually had four emails um, from some of our listeners talking about how they loved the the last piece we did on consistency and loved uh, some of what we were talking about in terms of uh, built for last, built to last uh, on building that business. But they didn't know what that business was. They didn't know what was what they truly wanted to invest time into because they didn't know what their why was, what their purpose was. And so today, I really want to take you through this exercise. And if you're listening at home, it's something that you guys can do. Uh, Answer these questions with Pradeep in your head and um, be able to really kind of figure out what that why is, what that purpose is for you. And and Pradeep, I'm curious, um, as we kind of go through this, uh, Pradeep has not been prepped on this, by the way. This is right off the fly. So um, I'm excited to kind of go through and see what his answers are. But I want you to tell me, something in your life that you loved being a part of. And I want it to be specific. I I want it to be an actual moment that we can pinpoint and know the actual event and give details. Ah, well, if, if I look back, are we talking about childhood or just in general? No, just in general. I just want to know at any part of your life, something that truly 
you loved being a part of, something that was so ingrained in you, something that if if I said, what is the best moment of your life? That's one of the moments that's going to pop up. And something that you loved being a part of so much that it is a found, it's foundationally built into you. Well, I, I can just tell you, if I say one of the best moments of my life was when my wife told me that we were ex- going to have a baby. So that was probably, if I look back, that was one of the most happiest times that I've ever had. And she was, it was funny because she was, she called me up and she was all nervous. She was like, uh, I got something to tell you. And I was like, okay. And I was actually driving. I was in the corporate world at that time. I was doing some, some visits to the retail locations and I wasn't expecting her call. So I took it and she's, and she sounded all nervous. I'm like, okay, you got to tell me what's going on. She's like, I, I took the pregnancy test and I'm pregnant. And I'm like, okay. And I just started laughing and she's like, why are you laughing? I'm like, why shouldn't I, should I be, <laughs> what else should I be doing? She's like, aren't you nervous? I'm like, no, not at all. I, I said, this is a part of life. I'm, I'm definitely excited. And uh, that just kind of led the path to another child later on. But that was probably the, one of the most happiest times that I can think of vividly. And so why specifically does that moment stand out to you? Uh, well, it was probably the emotion around it. And I, I don't know if I can exact, I tell you exactly why I had that emotion, but I just felt this sense of joy and happiness. It just literally just flooded through me. And all I could do was literally laugh. And the laughter, the, the, the sense of joy, the excitement, the happiness, where, where did that, where did that come from? What what was it meant for? What did you know was about to happen? Well, I knew that we were going to have a family uh, I knew that we were going to have a baby and, and we were going to have this new life in the world. But I, I, you know, if I take a look at it, it was, I think it was really around family that we know that we were taking our relationship to the next stage uh, because we were going to bring a life into this world. So I think that's where it really came from. So basically you have an, you have an opportunity to have a, have a family, to lead a, a family, to be a part of a family, to have somebody that, was looking up to you to create something in in life yeah yeah pretty much so now going back and looking at a very specific moment in your childhood something that is again very similar to that nature something that stands out a memory that is so vivid that uh, you you hold on to uh, day in and day out something that um again, just stands out from that childhood? Well, I, I would say, well, it, there are a series of things, but I would say some of my friends really stand out. We would, we had this basketball team and where we would just basically play street ball all day, almost every single day. And, and it was kind of like the, uh, cause it was, it was kind of like the brown guys against everybody else, like the white guys and everything, because the brown, there's only a few of us and we stuck together and everybody else would pick on us. But we, we held our own when it came to basketball. We did pretty darn good. We would, for the most part, beat everybody because we were so united and so um, in tune with each other in terms of how we played that we just kind of stuck together as a team. And so specifically talking to that moment, why, does that moment or why does that memory stand out to you versus a lot of other things that happened during that childhood or during your childhood? Yeah. Because we were having fun. We were just having a blast while we were doing it. And we were basically doing what we loved. There was a challenge there. Um, It, I think part of that also came down to facing adversity and overcoming it. I think that it also was a part of sharing those moments or uh, of winning with other um, like our team players, for example, uh, it gave us a sense of camaraderie. So it, there was just those aspects of, um, you could say almost like family as well. So it was a combination of a number of things. So coming out of there, like physically, we felt good because we were exhausted, but also it was like, okay, we did our best and we gave it everything we had. And see, I, if, if you're not watching this on video, you couldn't see my face as he was talking is you said three or four things that just brought smiles to my face because knowing you, knowing your business, knowing what you do now, knowing what you left. And if you don't know this story of Pradeep, you can go back and watch the one-on-one that we did with Pradeep back in, I think it's episode 12 or something like that, that really talked about his journey. But 
growing up on the apple orchard and then having that goal of being a CEO to lead um, how you found it really came out of ego and then all of a sudden gave it up one day to now run your own coaching company, something that you have built a culture around, a family around, something that you truly lead other men to be the best in their personal professional lives. It gives me goosebumps because you just told me two very key memories, two very huge things in your life. One, when your wife told you that you were having your first child, which you came back to and said, you have this, this sense of responsibility. You have this sense of family. It was the first moment that you knew you were going to have a family. The first moment that you knew you were going to have something so tightly knit that you did. And then we talked about the first childhood or the childhood memory. And it was that you had this, this group of like-minded individuals, this group that stuck together. And it was a basketball game. See, theoretically, you're talking about childbirth. You're talking about basketball, how, how they're related. It comes down to you saw them as a family. You guys were together. It was that you belonged. There was a sense, a, a place to be together. And those two things innately, because that's how I know you, that's what you want is you want a place to belong. And for you, your why, a purpose, a mission, would you say is fair enough to say that you want to be or create a place where other people feel like they can belong, a family, something that they can truly succeed in? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think uh, throughout my entire life, I've always tried to bring people together rather than separate them apart. Uh, it's the core part of what I do. So I would say absolutely. I think even for me, I think there's two parts to it. One is, yeah, I, I because we I grew up in a very strong family unit. I grew up in a family business, for example, where not only were my parents around, but extended family, my cousins, my aunts and uncles were around. So I grew up in a family environment that was very important. Um, but yeah, I see that now. I just see um, not only family, but com a community. I just think it just adds that much more. It's, it's funny you mentioned that because even in business ventures that I've done outside of my coaching consulting firm, even when I haven't had the need to bring anybody else in, I always do. I always bring in other people because it's like, okay, I don't want to share on this just myself. If there's someone else that I can share this with, it just feels that much more fulfilling. So yeah, definitely. I can say there's a massive family aspect to it. Definitely. We'd be remiss if we didn't take this time to thank our sponsors that allow us to reach you each and every week. The Coaches Council is powered by Canai Brands, a lab-tested, all-natural, pure hemp CBD company without the presence of THC. They encompass our passion for health, wellness, and fitness that we have on the Coaches Council. Visit canibrands.com and at checkout, use the promo code COACHES20 to enhance your wellness journey. And it's, it's ironic that you say that. I mean, that's how the, that's how the coaches council got started is we, we, when we first started talking, it wasn't about you. It wasn't about me. It wasn't about John or Craig or um, Brian or Drew or any one person, but it was about bringing a collective unit together and striving for a bigger purpose and striving for something at a greater level. And so for everybody listening who's gone through this, that has now answered both questions, and you're trying to bring the parallels like we just did with, with Pradeep, it's about taking a look and seeing, okay, what do I really enjoy doing? What do I maybe have as a hobby? What is it that brings joy to my life? You heard Pradeep say multiple times, joy, happiness. Those are all states of powerful being, a powerful state of being joy, love, passion. These are all um, uh, feelings and uh, things that reside in that powerful state of being. What do you do when you have those there? And then go back to that answer, the two answers that you have, the one of what you had that uh, the memory that stands out and another of one of a childhood memory and find the parallels there. Is it that you are somebody that loves family and wants to make that, that sense of family wherever you are? Is it that you're a protector? Is it that you are uh, somebody who empowers? Is it that you are somebody who creates value? Are you a networker? Are you a, uh, uh, a creator? What is that 
that almost, I don't want to say a word because I don't want to narrow it down to that, but what is that area that you can now explore deeper? Something that you can take a step in to begin to find that why, to find that purpose. Because when somebody says to you, pretty, what's your why? What's your purpose? It's a very overwhelming um, uh, question. Something that can really um, kind of throw us off sometimes and not really truly enable us to be, um, to show up in the way we truly want to there. Because at the end of the day, we want to make, it, 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 there's so much pressure when it says, what's your why? What's your purpose? Well, it can be multitude of things. And it's just like asking you a question and utilizing the feedback, the life lessons that have gone on around us where we can say, hey, what events do I continue to come back to in my life? What truly stands out to me that's going to help us find that why and find that purpose? For me, it was, it, it was, it was two events that were, um, that were very different. One was the day that um, I, I met Elise. Was, uh, I'll never forget it. I was in the pool. She was walking by. Um, and I just, I just knew that that was my person and jumped out of the pool. And if, if anybody knows what's, what had gone on to my life up before that, there was, there was addiction. I had gotten fired. There was, um, there was so many things that were going negatively in my life. I'd just gotten divorced and it was, it was an uphill battle. And the day, so many things were going well in my life at the same time, but it was still just like, <sighs> this sense of resiliency as I was like, that is my person and this sense of faith and knowing that there was something better. And as soon as I saw her, I was like, wow, that is her. And if I take that same childhood memory, it was, and it's something that stands out to me was it was uh, playing street hockey in uh, um, late at night and was <laughs> sneaking out of the house after, after dinner and playing street hockey with all my buddies and all the sun was setting and all the parents were around. And it, it's something that stands out to me because it was, it was that sense of community, that sense of belonging. And my purpose, my why in, in own it and what we do is to empower others to be the best version of themselves. Why? Because you're a part of a community that breeds positivity, that breeds empowerment, that breeds clarity and helps you and takes you out of that sense of struggle. Because I had been in a sense of struggle. I was an overweight kid that was always made fun of, but that's where I felt comfortable playing street hockey with my friends. I was in a state of continual depression, addiction, things were going negatively in, negatively in my life. But all of a sudden I found this place that brought me out of that struggle. And that, that's my purpose, is my mission, is to take people out of the struggle that they feel. And so all of a sudden you're able to start taking action on that. Your creative juices start flowing. You can start to decide how do you want to do that? Do you do it in business? Do you do it in fitness? Do you do it in health? How do you do this? And ultimately, you start to form this business around it, this sense of where you can be uh, a massive guiding light, just like you, Pradeep. You've now created this massive business around helping businessmen create that sense of family, that sense of belonging, that sense of freedom, and that sense of success in their life. But it all came from knowing what your why was and what your purpose was. Yeah, I think when you talked about, hey, look, the um, basically uh, the the whole thing around purpose can be daunting for a lot of people because if you believe that you know you don't have a purpose, that can be tough in life, right? And trying to find it can be even tougher at times. So I think with the process that you've taken people through, I think that's a brilliant idea because if you break it down, it's not that daunting. And I don't know if this the process you took them through is awesome. I think if you do that, you can actually put some effort into it. It's not like you can wake up one day and just be like, oh, this is my purpose. I think it takes time. I think it takes reflection. I think it takes, you know, the the effort of asking those questions that you asked. Um, Justin, what, like, when you talk to guys, when you train guys and gals on the fitness level, 
is it, like what's what's mainly their purpose? Do you find that they want to get in better shape because they have a purpose? Like, does it relate to their purpose in some way, shape, or form overall? So, to be honest, uh, where people often come from is there is a there's a under there's something deeper. There, it, there's always something deeper. Their their wellness is a interjecting point. And I know I've talked to you about this before, about the eight pillars that we operate off of, which is wellness, career, faith, relationships, finance, self-care, network, and legacy. And by looking at all eight of those pillars, it's often that wellness pillar that people are hiding behind. They're, they're hiding behind saying, well, I don't feel good in myself because I... I have uh, this extra 10 pounds on me, or I don't feel good because um, I, uh, uh, I don't eat very well. My diet's not very good. But in actuality, it's so much more than that because they've got their identity tied up in, in something greater where their relationship isn't good and they need to try and mask it or they, they, don't have any, they don't have a faith that they can just truly rely on that everything's going to be okay and they've got anxiety through the roof or um, their finances are an absolute disaster. But um, if I lose the 10, 15 pounds, that'll kind of correct itself as well. And so what I find is that people often come in with a misnomer thinking that if they handle this one aspect, it's going to correct everything. But in actuality, they find truly who they are through this. And that is, it's who they always have been. It's just that they haven't been able to find it before because there was something masking it. And it's that they were resilient. They are strong. They are powerful. They are, um, they're, they're perfect just the way they are, but they're too good to stay there. And finding those next steps are, are the keys to being able to unlock, as you asked in your original question, that true purpose, that true why. And oftentimes it's happened probably six or seven times now, as we've gotten them to this level of confidence and transformed either their bodies or more so their, uh, their minds and, and their life in that span of those eight pillars, they've been awoken to a new purpose, a new mission, a new reason why they've been put here and why they were struggling so hard so that now they can take that and it often leads them to a new career path as well. Yeah, that's really interesting that you say that. I think it, 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 when you were talking, something just spurred up for me because even the questions that you ask, I think innately we have this desire, we have this meaning internally that can play out in a purpose, but we're so overloaded with day-to-day stuff, day-to-day activities, plus the social pressures that people put onto us, whether it's a spouse or work or children, that that purpose is in there somewhere. It's not like you have to go out there and find a brand new purpose. Most likely, it's probably within you right now. You just got to, you know, like they say, peel back the layers or, or you know, the, even of the onion to get to the real core of what that purpose is. Um, one of the books that I'd like to re- recommend to the listeners out there is by Ken Keyes, and it's The Quest for Purpose. Uh, and we had a great chat on on my podcast and and. Something he said actually really resonated with me. And he said, you know what? When you don't have a purpose, one of the things, one of the purposes that you can immediately tackle is finding your purpose and spending some time just looking for that purpose. So having a purpose of finding that purpose is actually uh, interesting. So um, I-, I thought that was cool. And I think uh, that might be a good book for the listeners to listen uh, listen to or watch um, because uh, it's important to find that purpose. I mean, at the end of the day, that's it, it comes back to the the emails that um, that we got from those listeners about wanting to take steps step, steps forward, but feeling like they were held back by not knowing their purpose, feeling like they were um, limited because they didn't know what direction to go. But now all of a sudden, that you have an action step, just like you said in that book, is actually going and finding your purpose, going and doing these action steps, being deliberate, being intentional, asking yourself the question of uh, what is something that I truly loved being a part of? What is an event, something that stands out so vividly? 
Write down every single thing that you know, every detail, every emotion that you went through, every um, specific um, uh, feeling that you had in being there. The reason why that stands out to you, write that down and then go to that same point in your childhood where whatever event it is that it, it, it just it, it, it shows up in your mind over and over and over and over again. Write down those same emotions, the same things it brings up for you now, the, the thoughts around it, all of those things, and find the parallels. Because life gives us little treasure, other little pieces of, uh, of bread to follow. It's a little map. And the more that we are able to go back and pick up those pieces of bread and connect the dots, the closer we get to finding that treasure time and time again. And I don't want to make your why seem like the Holy Grail because your whys will continue to change. They will continue to evolve. Your why today may be different than it is 10, 15 years from now, simply because you've learned more, you've had more experiences, things have, ha- that have, have happened, but it won't be exponentially different. It will just be tweaked in some way, shape, or form. The core why is always the same. But how you were able to change it or how you were able to articulate it or how you were able to see it, verbalize it, that will slightly change. Remember, it's not perfection that matters. It's inconsistent perfection will get beaten by consistent imperfection every single time. But that's the the whole thing about just showing up day after day and asking yourself those questions and being in that space to truly find what your why truly is and what level you can take action on. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better, man. So with that, guys, take that. Take action on it. Be okay being imperfect, but show up consistently with that imperfection. And you'll find that at the end of the day, you have a purpose and a mission to go forward on. Stay hungry, stay humble, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us for another week of the Coaches Council. If it wasn't for you viewers and listeners, we wouldn't have a platform. So again, it's all about you guys. And we want to give you a reward just for listening. We want to give you access to each one of our coaches for a little bit deeper, intimate experience. So if you go to coaches-council.com, coaches-council.com, subscribe and like to whatever platform you're viewing on, you're going to be entered to have that one-on-one experience. So be sure to go coaches-council.com and really interact with us because we would love to interact with you. Until then, stay safe, stay hungry, stay humble, and thanks for listening.